In this video, we're going to learn what the call super antipattern is and why it's a problem. We'll go over how to fix the call super antipattern using the template method design pattern. We'll illustrate these concepts in Python, but these concepts do go beyond Python. So first off, what is the call super antipattern? So call super is an antipattern in which a particular class stipulates that in a drive subclass, the programmer is required to override a method and call back the overridden method itself at a particular point. So what does this really mean and how can this occur? So up here we have two classes that are responsible for generating reports. We have a sales report class for generating sales reports and a cost report class for generating cost reports. Now the sales report objects are going to be initialized with a company name and some amount of sales. Then they have this make report method that actually makes the report itself. Part of the report is this report heading here, where we just output the report heading, company name, and this row of stars before getting into the body of the report where we output the sales. The cost report object is going to work pretty similarly. We have the object being initialized with a company name and costs, and the make report method has the exact same code for outputting the report heading. Then in the body of the report, the costs are output. So here we make two objects, a sales report object with the company name Google and 20,000 in sales. And then we make a sales report. Then we make a cost report object with Amazon as a company, 50,000 in costs. And we make a report using the make report method. So if we run our program here, it's going to work fine. We'll get our sales report for Google and our cost report for Amazon. But we have this duplicated code in our program where the report heading is being generated with the exact same code in both of these make report methods. Whenever we have duplicated code in our program, we might wonder if we could refactor it in a better way. In this case here, we might think that we could use inheritance to remove this duplication. So for example, we could make a base class or what's sometimes called a super class or a parent class called report. And this base class is going to have its own make report method. That make report method is going to include the code that's common to both the sales report and cost report classes. And then we'll make both those classes derive classes or what we could call child classes or subclasses of this report base class. So we'll take this code here and we'll cut it out of the sales report and we'll put it in here. We'll also cut out the same code from the cost report method. Now we're going to make sales report and cost report derive classes of the base class report. So we'll make them both derive classes. This means they can access the methods defined in the base class or what's sometimes called the super class. So what they could do is in their make report method, call the base classes make report method to take care of the report heading portion of the report. So for example, they could say super dot make report, and this would call the base classes make report method. We would then do the same thing in the cost report make report method. So we can save this and run our program and the functionality is identical. The same reports are produced and we've reduced the code duplication because we only have one definition of the report heading generation logic is only defined once. So we could give ourselves a pat on the back. We've reduced code duplication. The problem is we now have the call super anti pattern in our code. And that's because the derived classes make report methods are required to call the base classes make report method. And this is not enforced in any way by any feature of the language. So there's nothing stopping a programmer from not doing that and making a mistake. So for example, let's say the programmer that implements the cost report class just forgets to call the make report method of the super class or the base class. We can take that away, save this and run it. And now, our cost report is missing 
the report heading that we could say is required to be there. That's the problem. There is no language feature that's upholding this requirement. So it becomes this implicit requirement that the programmer has to respect and remember and be aware of. There's a better way to do this. First, let's clarify something though. So you might get the impression that it's a bad thing to call base class methods at all. That's not the case. Just to be clear, there's nothing wrong with a derived class method using a base class method. Requiring this is the anti-pattern, as it will not be enforced by a language feature, allowing mistakes to occur. So it's the requirement that the derived class method must call the base class method that makes this an anti-pattern. So one solution is to use the template method design pattern. So a template method is defined in a base class and it's going to implement the overarching template for an algorithm made up of higher level steps in part by using helper methods. These helper methods will be implemented by derived classes to accomplish the more specific functionalities within those classes. So we'll do it this way instead. Let's refactor our code again. So we're going to change this method. We're going to actually have it call a new method called make report body. So we'll say def make report body, but we're going to make this method an abstract method that the derived classes are required to implement. So to do this, we're going to use the abstract base class module, and we're going to include the abstract method decorator. We're going to make the report class an abstract base class. And we're going to use the abstract method decorator to make this an abstract method. This means that the derived classes will have to implement the make report body method. So this make report body method is a helper method in the template method pattern. The make report method is going to be the template method. It's going to use this helper method. We'll say self dot make report body. So the idea here is that the make report method is defining the overarching algorithm at a high level where to make a report, we're going to print out the report heading. Then we're going to output the report body. This helper method is actually kind of interesting because we're not actually defining it in this class. We're leaving that to the derived classes to define it. So this method here, make report, really becomes about defining a template for how to make a report. And we've kind of sectioned off part of that algorithm and said, we're going to define this later. And we've achieved that by making this make report body method and making it an abstract method, because this is going to enforce that our derived classes must override this. So what we'll do now in our derived classes is make our make report methods a make report body method instead. We'll do the same thing with costs. So we can take out this and we can just say make report body. So we can save this and we can run our code and we'll get the exact same output as the first time that we ran our program. But the way it's working is fundamentally different. So in the case of this sales report object here, when we call make report, it's now the base class make report method that's being called. It's going to output the report heading that we get here, but then it's going to hit this helper method, make report body. That's not even defined in the report class. It's defined in the sales report class. It's going to output the sales portion of the report. So our code is working in a fundamentally different way. And what's really neat about this version of our program, is that we've removed the code duplication, but we've also prevented the call super anti pattern from occurring by using the template method design pattern. And again, what's great about this design pattern is we're enforcing this requirement that the helper methods be implemented. So for example, if we didn't implement this make report body method in the cost report class, if we save our program and try to run it, we get an error here. We can't do this. It says can't instantiate abstract class cost report with abstract methods make report body. So we've used the abstract method language feature 
to enforce this requirement that the helper method be implemented. So hopefully in this video, you've learned what the call super anti-pattern is and why it's a problem and how we can use the template method design pattern to help get around the call super anti-pattern. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.